motorcycle is whatever you want to make it. Turn it on, you can give yourself a real thrill. I sound a little bit nasally, that's because my nose is a little bit clogged already. Just doing a solo ride. This is kind of a gnarly trail, if I go to the left anyway, and I think I am. I don't know, we'll see. Kind of feel like that fat kid on The Simpsons. Definitely a sketchy ride to do solo. It's a little bit early in the year, so I know the trail system that uh, I'm thinking about going to the left. I haven't ridden that all the way before. It's been a couple of years since I've ridden it at all. But I love on this bike how you can keep it in a gear too high and just modulate the clutch. And it kind of emulates a two-stroke where you can really modulate the power to the ground pretty good. It really gives you controllable power that way. I think we tend to take a lot of things on these new bikes for granted. It's kind of human nature though, if you're used to something, to take it for granted. It's like me with my LASIK surgery. I'm already taking my amazing eyesight for granted. I just completely forget about it and then I'm, I just start thinking about it one day and I'm like, wow, I don't have to do anything to have 20-20 vision right now besides wake up in the morning and open my eyes. Definitely something that people take for granted if they haven't had bad eyes. Ever. So I think about it probably more than most people. When I was a kid, I would look up at the sky and see nothing at, at night. I didn't know what stars even looked like. My eyes have been bad for a long time. In school I could never see the board and, and football, I was the running back and I would have to wait till defense was in my face before I could um, try to juke them or anything. So that said, it's, it's pretty awesome to have perfect eyesight now. Here it is. Anyways, as I was saying, it's pretty easy to, to take things for granted, like your electric start, for example. I've been hitting that magic button on my handlebars for like a couple years now, and you just get used to just hitting that button. It works every time. Before, if you had an electric start on your bike, it was a it was a heavy lard of a motorcycle. Now you have these lightweight racing bikes that have uh, the push button start. There are some sacrifices though. Like recently they did away with kickstart, which isn't a good thing in my opinion. I would love to see kickstarts come back. Yeah, you have this lightweight bike that has great suspension, a great engine, chassis is amazing, horsepower that will blow your mind. And it's uh it's got liquid cooling system so it doesn't really overheat like the old bikes would and lose power. 
Granted, this bike will still overheat in the real gnarly stuff where you have to slow down. If you're not putting air through the radiators, then it'll start to get pretty hot. And this, uh, this electric, or not electric, this hydraulic clutch, hydraulic brake, feel amazing. Just the little things about these new modern bikes that you take for granted. I think if I rode an old bike out here one day, I would definitely be re reminded of uh, just how poorly the old bikes were made. They just weren't as refined. They didn't have the metallurgy that they have these days. It's a pretty bridge. Now, if I remember right, I think this is where things start to get real. I'm at a huge disadvantage when I'm on this two when I'm on this four stroke as opposed to the, the two stroke. Which is definitely something that's surprising to most people. When you're going really slow, this bike does have a kind of a chug along feel. Definitely wants to grab. Whereas the two-stroke, you can modulate your power better at really low speed. But it allows you to be more precise, whereas this bike just wants to grab and go. This bike it grabs onto the ground and throws you forward. It's like, all right, let's go forward. wet. It's not bad though, it's just dry enough. But I haven't been this way, <clears throat> and it looks like it looks like somebody has cleared this out fairly recently. So whoever did that, you are appreciated. Some of these guys that clear trail are uh, some pretty good riders. They have to be good riders. Idaho has some of the gnarliest terrain there is. A lot of times people from other states will come over here and start to try to ride. They're like, oh my god, what do you guys ride on? On camera, this stuff doesn't look that bad. But just about any other state, a rider will come here and just be astonished at how steep this stuff is. But this is a trail that you can get all the way through and up to the Trinities, I believe. This is 
<laughs> if you can keep from it, you should really keep your feet on the pegs. And you, or if you can keep from it, you should really not take your foot off the peg to try to plant it. It's really slick in here. Makes it makes for a rough ride for sure. Yeah, this trail is definitely not for beginners. I'm getting pretty soaked. I don't know about this. It's pretty cold out here when you're when you <laughs> if I can talk. It's pretty cold out here when you're wet. I'm in the thick stuff like this. I just have this thought in the back of my head that there's gonna be a chopped log that's gonna whack me. straight down. Wouldn't want to fall off of that one. It's a lot of water. I think eventually it crosses this.
see what happens. Hopefully I don't sink. This is the furthest I've ever been. These logs are all wet. Just gonna go across these slick rock logs right here, across this really deep, fast moving body of water. Um, no, not really. Not solo. It's not a good move. Not a good move.